Valuable runs for Richard Illingworth. Straight past the man at slip. Hoop was not particularly impressed. More so because it was a very good quicker ball from uh, Carl Hooper. And there were two more runs added to take it up to 269 for eight at the close of play. 42, Robin Smith, another good innings from him. He's right back in form. And Richard Illingworth, as he showed in the Texaco matches, is uh, a very useful late order batsman. He's 13 not out. And that is a partnership of 41 between Smith and Illingworth. Nice respectable total at the end of the day. 50 runs per 100 balls for England. A very good rate. The bowling, well, Curtly Ambrose once again was outstanding. 27 overs, 5 maidens and 4 for 61. A wicket to Marshall who's off the field injured. Walsh has a wicket. Allen has two at Trent Bridge. And uh, we join play now with the third ball of the third over. One run has been added. It's 270 for 8. And the bowler is Ambrose. The batsman is Killingworth. Well, my word, Illingworth looked to have taken that on the back of the arm, but in fact, obviously took it on the glove, and West Indies have struck. Ambrose, again, that's his fifth wicket, and Illingworth goes, trying to take evasive action, couldn't do it, and a simple catch. This is what we saw, Illingworth turning his back. It looked as though it had hit him on the back of the forearm, but instead, on the glove, Another good piece of hostile fast bowling. David Lawrence, he's keen to get there, he's running to get there. Oh, that's close, my word. How far forward did he get to get the benefit of the doubt? I don't think it was going over the top of the stumps, but probably just missing leg stump. Let's see what that was off. Dujon made a grab at it. Ambrose looks disappointed. Well, certainly a, a good delivery. I say wasted on David Lawrence was that. An opening batsman would have had great difficulty in playing that. Coming back like an off break. <laughs> well, that's the way for Smith. England have made no progress this morning virtually, but uh, if Smith can put together another 20 or 30 runs. Well, they say if you're going to flash, flash hard, and that's the way to do it. With the cross bat, if you get a top edge, then nine times out of ten it will go over the top. That's Marshall now to Lawrence. That's a good shot. Oh, my word. <laughs> Well, we've got David Lawrence running two on his own there. Robin Smith didn't leave. Lawrence will be highly upset he didn't get a run for it. And in fact, he's, he, he could claim two. Just watch this. Now, Smith's not interested. It is the last ball he over. Go back, he says. The fielder's got the ball there. Lawrence well over halfway. He's covered about 37 yards and got nothing for it. single and it's a half century for Robin Smith it's another good innings uh, all I can tell you is I wish I could have played that straight like that. That is one of the most superb things you'll see in cricket. The back foot drive through extra cover. And so perfectly poised. Oh, dropped it. David Lawrence decided to have a go at the bouncer. Got a bit of a tangle, and well, they're off the splice at the bottom of the bat, and 
Walsh going around there. Well, really a very comfortable catch. Can't say that man will be too pleased with that. In fact, I'm sure he's not. No good saying you wouldn't read about it because you will. I think it went quite quickly, this, because Smith nudged at it. He didn't just try and cut it, and it went quite quickly. It was, it was the height, really, that did uh, Viv Richard there. He was going upwards with the hands, and that's why the ball came out. The really good slip fielders tend to stay down there and get their fingers pointing skywards. That was just in that in-between height there. Brings up the 300 for England. Well, that's out. And Lawrence finally, his uh, his aims were too over ambitious. Disappointing end, but uh, he's played his part. The, he faced 22 deliveries out of 64 there and that's uh, a tribute to Robin Smith for the way that he's shepherded his partner through a last wicket stand and it's been a good one it's been worth 30 and it's also used up half an hour this is how David Lawrence got out yes he just got a little bit over ambitious it wasn't quite a half volley uh, yes but he played with a tremendous amount of determination as well only made four but it was a very valuable inning. Smith was left stranded there on 64. Another good innings from him after he played so well at Lords and in the first test match at Headingley. A total of 300. That's better than England might have expected at one stage. And a champion performance from Kirtley Ambrose. 34 over, 7 maidens and 5 for 74. Marshall, a little bit at uh, odds with himself today. 2 for 54. A wicket to Walsh, 2 for Allen. And it was Ambrose and Marshall who did the bulk of the work. So a good performance there from uh, the West Indians to keep England down to 300, but still an excellent performance from Graham Gooch's men to get up to that score. Well, the first over of the West Indian innings was a maiden, bowled by Philip De Freitas. We join now with the first ball of the second over. David Lawrence is the bowler. Desmond Haynes is taking strike. Just what Haynes wanted and Lawrence didn't. It was short, it was wide. Here's <laughs> out. Success for David Lawrence. And a big prize for him, Desmond Haynes. Haynes has scored 18, 32 for one. And just before the lunch break, West Indies lose their first wicket. Well, any time's a good time to get a wicket, but to get one eight minutes before lunch and to get the big prize of all, Desmond Haynes, who's a key to the West Indies batting, to get him caught out, bat and pad, nice one-handed catch. Super bowling from David Lawrence. He may be a little bit expensive, He's an explosive type of bowler, but he's got the breakthrough. The incoming batsman is Richie Richardson. And a change of bowling just before the lunch interval. Richard Illingworth, an early turn to spin. He's out. his first ball in test cricket Richard Illingworth Phil Simmons will be the name on his sideboard for the rest of his life Phil Simmons not doing anything wrong just playing defensive but the ball has enough pace to just carry on bouncing slowly back to the stumps 
uh, Richard Dillingworth. And it's amazing coincidence that another Worcestershire, Worcestershire left-arm spinner, Dick Howarth, took a wicket with his first ball in Test cricket also against South Africa in 1947. It's a nice ball on a length. Phil Simmons plays immaculately forward defensive with his hands so soft, kills it, that the ball just has time and chance to spin back onto the wicket. It's a little bit unlucky, that. That's an awful way to get out. Carl Hooper is the new batsman. That's cracked away beautifully. Too short from uh, Richard Dillingworth. It was a fine shot. And Jack Russell has him. Carl Hooper caught at the wicket and De Freitas deserved that. This is his eighth over. He's bowled quite magnificently out there, given nothing away and has moved the ball away from the right-handers. A lovely exhibition of bowling. Well, a fine piece of bowling by De Freitas. He's bowled really well from that Ratcliffe Road end. And there again, a beautiful delivery, like a leg cutter. I always felt De Freitas should bowl from that end, and Lawrence from the pavilion end. But uh, it's only since lunch they've got De Freitas at that end, and he's bowled absolutely superb. The West Indian skipper comes out at a moment of crisis Two wickets before lunch, and then Carl Hooper. He's got it away again. It's a difficult balance for Gooch to strike. He's, he wants to attack. He desperately wants another wicket or two, and he'll be clean through the top order. I think Philip de Freit has done a super job bowling at uh, West Indies since lunch. But I think Graham Gooch is a pretty warm, warm to hot day. We'll probably be thinking of giving him a rest and probably giving Derek Pringle a ball. And that is a good shot. Almost an uppercut. He knew what he was doing. Yes, and I think that ball said to me just a fraction of tiredness here. We've got a bowling change. It is Derek Pringle. This will be Pringle's first bowl in the innings. That's a lovely shot. Really was a lesson in timing and placement. Just leaned across it, flicked the wrists and bisected the field perfectly. No ball call. And that's another four. Continue now to Richard Richardson. Handed up for the West Indies, the loss of three wickets. Richardson, Richardson there on your left, and the captain, Viv Richards, on the right. That's another beautiful shot. You could hear the ring of the meat of the bat in that ball from Richards. Just a defensive shot, but it brought him three runs. But yet again, I make the point, Raymond, so many runs have come off Lawrence as penalties for pitching the ball up, which is exactly what you want him to do, because mid-on and mid-off are so wide. Oh, he played it on, he played it on. The reward for pitching the ball up, keeping it up, keeping it at the batsman. What a match for David Lawrence. He removes first Desmond Haynes and second Richie Richardson. And Richardson was concentrating so hard and playing so very well. But he's been bowled by Lawrence for 43. 
Yes, Lawrence does concede runs, but he also takes wickets, and that's what's important at Test match cricket. This was a good Yorker, it was right up there, coming down on it and just onto that off stump. But uh, that's a good delivery. Not frightened to pitch the ball up, although he's been driven twice through mid on and mid off. Still keeping that ball up there. And Logie, the batsman, coming in. Close. Well, David Lawrence has been working up a lot of pace here to the ball, pitching outside off stump. And although the England players had slip and the weak keeper went up, I think that ball came back and probably just got the pad outside off stump. Well, Pringle was in that spot. But even at uh, six foot four, it wouldn't have mattered very much because it went right over the top. David Lawrence having bowled up a short run. Well, he's only a small man, but my goodness, he does pack a punch. So, Viv Richards now in very determined mood. He's on 28. Or rather, 32. Any people to move for that as the people in the crowd are going to throw it back. Richard Illingworth now to Gus Logie. Oh, that's bad bowling. Now, this is a very untypical effort from Richard Illingworth. not quite where Viv Richards intended it but it's still his half century and a very valuable innings for West Indies they were in trouble Richards has come out there and played in very responsible fashion a new bowler at the pavilion end Graham Hick comes on to bowl off spin Beautiful six. A wonderful stroke by Vivian Richards against the off spinner. Came down and quite deliberately hit it in the air over long off. That's a very fine shot from Gus Logie. Chase is in vain, and the outside edge of Vivridge's bat brings him another four. And the 100 partnership comes up between Vivian Richards and Gus Logie. That's yeah, just a defensive shot and outside edge in the ball running wide of slips. And Mike Atherton, that's about his fourth chase down there. And that's 50 to Gus Logie. Timely for his side. And talented too. Played a lot of shots very fluently at the start. Had a zooming start. But still has played with great responsibility. So we have the return of David Lawrence from the Rackley Pro Dan. There's a big hit, now Viv is really opening up. It's a six. It isn't too often Lawrence gets hit there for six. Oh, that was well bowled. 
and it looks as though Russell has dropped him. He's bowled him. He's bowled him. Well, he's not going, but there's little doubt about that. Viv Richards is looking at Russell. He's looking at the umpire. He's still not going, but he's been given. And Illingworth's got his man for 80. West Indies, 239 for five. Now, Viv Richards, very unhappy about that. Yes, I think he's unhappy about the dismissal because he wasn't sure where the ball went and how it came to knock down the stumps or did the wicketkeeper's boot catch the stumps? If you watch the ball, it comes down the wicket to Richard Illingworth. It hits him on the boot and it goes from there onto the stumps. Hit the leg stump as Viv is scrambling back. The wicketkeeper never touched the stumps at all. And there we see the bowels coming off clearly before Jack Russell's gloves are anywhere near the stumps. It's a fine innings and one of great determination, some sparkling stroke play. And that'll give Gus Logie the chance to pierce the field. Two more runs added up to the close of play to take it along to 262 for five. That's a very impressive scorecard because the West Indies were in trouble at one stage. Simmons out for 12 and Haynes 18. Then Richie Richardson fell to Lawrence for 43. Hooper for 11. And Logie remains 72 not out with Dujon unbeaten on three. 23 extras, 262 for five. But the controversy of the day was that dismissal of Vivian Richards. Now one man in the same eye line as Jack Hampshire, the umpire, was Richard Illingworth. He was of the opinion that the ball hit the stump on the way through, and he voices that to umpire Hampshire as he turns around now with Richards watching Russell. Bold, he says. And he said later on at the press conference he was of the opinion that the ball hit the stumps. Now Sky Sports are able to show us a different angle from midwicket does the ball just clip the stump on the way through onto Russell's foot, then back onto the leg stump? Well, there's no doubt Richards is well out of his ground. You've seen umpire Kitchen raising his finger and then refer to umpire Hampshire, and it will stand as bold. And you may even find tomorrow that the England wicketkeeper Jack Russell was of the opinion that the ball flicked the leg stump on the way through. The bowling figures. Very good bowling there from Philip De Freitas. 20 overs, 7 maidens, 1 for 37. David Lawrence bowled with great speed and tremendous determination all day. 17 overs, 2 maidens, 2 for 87. Delayed until 110. Thunderstorm.